what have we got here? That's a nice looking patrol. Hey, young mate. Hey, how you going? Is this your patrol, mate? Yeah, yeah, it is, yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, oh, coronavirus. <laughs> how you going? Good, mate, how yeah. are you? Yeah, not bad. Good. So what's your name, mate, Scott? Yeah, Scott, yeah. yeah. How yeah. did I know that? <laughs> this must be set up. What are we set up on, mate? It's a 2006 Series 4, Factory 4.2. Been set it up for a bit of touring, a bit of play on the weekends, a bit closer to home. Let's get into it. Righto, Scott, we're missing a badger. What is it? Ah, uh, so yeah, it's a AIB Deluxe Bar. Went with this just for the um, fact that they're quite a tidy bar. Um, I've had two, two bars on my previous cars and just tried to steer clear from that just for the attention of exposed wheels and... So what do you mean tube bars? You mean uh, like... Just your comp style tube bars. They actually don't have the infill plates here. Generally you have your centre bit uh, and the tube coming up the side. And yeah, they're just, it does quite quite expose a fair bit in the front so so yeah. you're going for more protection a bit more protection and um, more of a touring style yeah yeah that's a bit of a different looking winch it's a um worn high mount winch god always had them in my in the vehicles find them a bit faster and have a good good pull um compared to your low mounts how did you manage to get it in there and what have you done to make it fit basically when the bar got all powder coated and the bar work done the Fabricators there, they've cut the cut the top of it out, put some bracing in, got it to fit in there. Obviously just cut the grill as well to house the motor there. Yeah, I see you still save the Nissan. Yeah, yeah, still got that in there. It does sit quite neat. How many spools of rope, or well, how many metres of rope? Um, they happily fit about 45. Got about 30 on there at the moment, just had some rope laying around home, so mm. threw that on there. Um, but yeah, you'll happily get 45 on there. Okay, and how much faster is this winch compared to a normal winch? They're quite a lot faster. Um, I haven't really done many mods to this. I've only done the upgraded, I think they're a 6.5 horsepower motor. Um, but that compared to a low mount, you, yeah, the speed is unreal. From memory, they're 8,000 pound, but it is debatable. The high mount winches, the pulling power of these, um, it's quite unreal. Mm. They, um, yeah. They're a lot faster, which is the thing I like about them. Yeah. I, I have been daydreaming about a high mount winch, but I haven't done it yet. Yeah, no, they're awesome. So, interesting to see how you've done it too. Any bash plates down here apart from this one which came with the bar? Yeah, bucket? this one just came with the bar. Um, I think it's only about two mil plate. A diff pumpkin plate as well? Yeah, yeah, that's just a superior one. Front diff out on the tracks, you know, do take some hits every now and then. In the future, I do want to take the diff off and um, get it braced and mm. incorporate that into it. Off the ARB deluxe bar there, I've uh, gone with some heavy duty sliders slash steps. Who just made these? BMK. He's a Perth-based fabricator. Yeah, I've heard um, of him before. Yeah, got him to make them up. Got the plate on top just to stop the stone chips and that on the bottom of the seals. Mm. Uh, so it's more of a protective than it is a side step because you can't really get your foot there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm. they do have a bit of an angle there, but um, out on the tracks, just wanted that protection for the seals. Yeah, and fair enough. <laughs> some of the stuff will go up, yeah. <laughs> this brush bar is the original one that comes with the ARB and you've just made it fit to here? No, no, that's all... Um, that's actually been all modded up as part of the step. 
Oh, okay. And they come up and he's done quite a neat joiner here on the um on the bull bar. Oh, like the roll cage. Yeah, style. yeah. And joiners. it's made to the same diameter as the um, ARB Deluxe Bar, so... Mm. And it's a bit heavier gauge too, this one. Yeah, yeah. Anymore. Couldn't tell you off the top of my head what gauge, but... It's definitely um, more than 1.6. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, let's go to the back. Rear bar. Is this one of those Outback ones? Yeah, it's an Outback Accessories bar. Um, I've gone with this bar just because they sit quite nice on the car. I like the idea of the um, on the jerry can holders. They do have a strut system just for a bit of ease. Hold it open on the hills. Corona certified. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have to swap that out for hand sanitizer soon. So. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I've heard of some people complaining about these lights how to fit it on. You haven't found any problem with these? Haven't found any issues. The mounting tabs on them are quite weak though. They're mm. only held in by sort of two screws on each side. So. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. Yeah. They're quite a nice looking light though. Um, the reverse lights that come in the bar here, they find them pretty bright at night. You can use them as a camp light. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah. Very nice. So you've got two jerrys on this one and you've opted for one spare here. You yeah, carry... just one 35. Yeah, um, just carry one? Yeah, if I'm doing a longer trip, I'll probably end up putting one on the roof. Oh, your Mack trucks are mounted to the door, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, so that's just a custom bracket as well, made up by a fabricator here in Perth. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty neat, actually. Yeah. I like that. So they're hmm. just held in there. They've got the little pin here that you can lock it, slides out, so it can't actually be... Just looking from the outside, I thought it was mounted to here. But yeah, yeah, no, I've just picked up off the um, the factory holes for the old wheel carrier, the hmm. back barn door. Got the um, light bracket here on the back of the wheel carrier. It's just to house two reverse lights. Um, I do have them wired up to a switch, so I can use them as camp lights or... Is that a custom bracket? Um, it was a custom bracket, yeah. Do you feel so you need two, or you could have got away with one? Probably could have got away with one, but I like the idea of this one faces backwards and the other one here is sort of Ah, uh, yeah, outside. so when you're reversing around out in the bush. Yeah. That's a pretty neat bag you got here too? Yeah, I've got this bag. Um, it's PM Canvas, guy here in Perth that makes them up. Yeah, um, old Nathan. Yeah, snatch straps in there, um, shackles in that side, and just rubbish. On the first floor now, the roof rack. Kept it pretty simple up here. Just running a super center steel roof rack, full length. Just houses the 200 watt solar panel. That's a huge panel, eh? Yeah, yeah. Keeps the batteries topped up. Doesn't seem to go under about 90%. So two batteries then? Two batteries, yeah. Running two 105 amp hour AGM batteries in the rear. Nice, um, that'll yeah. give you sufficient power for a while then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, can park up for a few days and not have to stress. Can you park up for a week? And not have to worry and leave your fridge on? Yeah, the fridge runs 24-7. I don't daily the car, so um, this just parks in the driveway and keeps it topped up. Nice. So never have drama. A 200 watt panel is enough for two batteries for you with your fridge. Cool. Yep, yep. <laughs> and on this side, I take it's for swags? Tanks. Yeah, yeah. So on the shorter trips in summer, I um, strap the swag up here on top. Dog gets the back of the car there on the drawers, so keeps it out the car for him, a bit more space. So what about long trips? Uh, long trips, depending where I'm going, if there's water, I'll chuck the kayak up here in here as well. Strap that up there. Just keep most of the clutter out of the car as much as I can, to be honest. Nice. It gets good use then. It yeah, has, it has a purpose. Yeah. You got your rear camera up high. I like that. Mounted that up here on top. Gets a good angle on the, you mm. know, reversing. I can power that up on the head unit as well to come on while driving. Finally, your awning on this side. Yeah, so I've mounted a... Um, That's pretty big, eh? Yeah. It's the Darch 270 awning. Is that the one that goes both ways? Yeah, it goes both ways. So it'll fold out to the front um, left-hand headlight and swings out to about here. So. Lights and comms. Just at the front, running the GME um, aerial for the UHF here. Um, it's a 6.6 .6 dB. Find the range pretty good out in the tracks, in the hilly terrain and that. Still picking up friends from quite a while away. And that just runs back to the GME XRS unit. Just all on the handpiece in there. Oh, the new one with the, you can see yeah. your mates are on an app and all that? Yeah, it's got an app. You can see where your friends are and you can actually see the distance they are away. Track them on that. Awesome. And just next to that, just got a AM, FM, GME aerial here. I've just run that just to try and keep the, the factory one here away. Um, on the tracks, it seems to come up and yeah, they snap yeah. off. 
Fair enough. Have you disconnected that power torch so it doesn't even pop up? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've disconnected cool. that. Mm. That stays down and, um, yeah, get a lot better range with this as well. Have you placed this here because it gets protected by this one? I sort of just like the look of them closer side together rather yeah. than have them separated over the other side. Okay, um, so yeah. it's just what happened. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good idea because these do snap if you have them here, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, it does. Lost a few, it does. Right? Yeah, it yeah. does. Well, let's move on to lights then. Yep. Let's start with that one. Deddy single row. I think it's a 43 inch by memory. It's just a spot. There isn't much spread, obviously, on the sides there. And where you mounted it, it's not really hitting anything, is it? It's no, it is. It's here and maybe just here? Yeah, I don't get any glare on the bonnet. It's basically just the aerial, just that shiny edge on the mm. aerial. Which is good, because it's a silver bonnet. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I'll use that out on the road most times, really. Um, these seem to do quite a bit of the distance. Not, not much distance, but mm. yeah, sort of in front. And that does out the sides a lot on the shoulders, okay. I find. So. And what are these and how do you find them? Uh, they're just the old King spotties. Uh, I've had these for about four years now. I have just got an upgrade recently coming. Just the steady okay. um, Type X Pros. Yeah. Just to try and get a bit more light out of them. And, so, um, what are you lacking? Distance or spread? Or both? Sort of lacking distance. I'm hoping to get a little bit more distance out of the um, out of the steadies. Mm. Um, looking at the the distance chart on the website, they do look um, quite a bit better than these. Steady fog lights um, slash DRL. They're just wired up to my park lights. So mm. they just come on while I'm, yeah, when the headlights are on. Two lights on the back also, they're the steady, just a little work light. I do have lights underneath, rock lights. Um, apart okay. from that, yeah, that's all the lights. What about your normal lights? Have you upgraded these? Um, they do have LED globes in there, just JW speaker LED globes. Have they improved? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, definitely compared to the halogen, they're massive improvement. Tires and lift, Scotty. Underneath, running some Dobinson's four inch coils. Heavy duty, the 150 constant rate in the front and 400 constant rate in the rear. And uh, that's enough for the rear? Yeah, I find that's enough. Um, it probably wouldn't hurt to get some airbags just to allow for the, the extra weight in the back. Um, okay. Yeah. Do you tow? Don't tow much, no. I right. uh, don't tow. So it's mainly just when you really load up for a trip? Pretty much, just the food, the drinks, the dog. And the mm. camping gear can sag a little bit. Shocks wise, you got some good stuff in there. Yeah, so running the Kings 2.5 coil uh, smoothies, the remote resis, they got about 30, 30 clicks of adjustment on them. So. 30 clicks of adjustment? Yeah, okay. yeah. So. Have you mucked around with it much? <laughs> yeah, I do. When I go off road, I generally um, put them down to a lower setting. Mm. Um, in the front, we'll go about halfway, in the back, a little bit harder just to allow for the weight. On the highway, yeah, I just keep them on hard just to stop the body roll and just, yeah. Okay. Don't find that I need them so soft on the road. Got sway bars now. Uh, mm. but yeah. Front and rear then? Yeah, it, the shocks definitely do help though, keeping them on hard. What height are we sitting at? Uh, it's four inch front and rear. So when you do a four inch on a Series 4 Patrol, is there much you have to do with the drive line? Do you have to extend any shafts or anything? Not a whole lot, N not with that. Um, you do need to do your front and rear uh, pan hard rods. Mm -hmm. Just they need to be adjustable. Obviously, when you lift the car, the body does move over. Yeah. And you get poke on one side, so it just brings it back. Your radius arms, did you have to do anything there to get more travel out of them? No, I haven't done radius arms. A lot of people do upgrade them, though, just to mm. extra flex and a bit more drivability. Okay. But, um, but so far, you haven't found? No, nah, for what I do in the car and the tracks I do, I've just kept them standard. King's steering dampener. Oh, it's quite hidden up here with the, um, with the chassis mount. Just Okay. Know, Big tyres and that on the highway just to try to stop some of the bump steer and yeah. yeah. And uh, there's a Panard is the tough dog, eh? Oh uh, yeah, tough dog Panard, and then we've got a superior front and rear drag link and tyre rod. Okay. Um, heavy duty, just yeah. I've bent a few of those out on the tracks in previous years, so Fair enough. upgrade always helps. So you mentioned coil retainers. Yeah, so in the rear with the patrols, when you are uh, running a larger spring, when you do articulate, the spring can fall out of the arm. Um, out of its place. Something uh, you don't want? <laughs> no, definitely not. So um, Superior Engineering make up some retainers that just hold the spring in down the bottom, um, drop out cone in the top. So when you're yeah, articulating, so yeah, it can guide itself back into mm. where it needs to sit. Yeah, cool. So, Did you do that before or have you actually lost the spring before? No, I've done that all, done that all at once. I've yeah, learned okay. from previous cars that 
yeah. yeah the springs are meant to be in the car not on the ground now talking about boots yeah so rims and tires um just got some dynamic beadlock 17 by 9 steel rims just find that the beadlocks off-road and the tracks you do just try to avoid popping beads and can let the pressures right down and know that i can um safely do it For what pressures do you go down to now generally mud rock i'll drop down to about 18 20 um, mm. a little bit lower in the sand if it is really soft i can happily go down to eight eight pound ten pound so yeah it's pretty handy. 35 by 12 and a half on a 17 inch room gone with the nitto trail grapplers i've ran these for many years now it's about my second set um, i find that they wear good a great tire on and off the road not too noisy Second set, as in you had 35s before as well? Had 35s as well, the wear from them, so. How many Ks? Um, these ones now are sitting at about 30,000. So they, they do wear pretty well, and I do rotate them just to you know get the extra Ks out of. The Series 4, did it come with auto and manual? Came with the auto, auto locking hubs. Um, they're a great idea. Obviously it's nice to chuck yeah. it in full drive and not get out, um, but they are quite weak, I found. Went out a couple of times and blew one up so just put the manual ones on there straight away and yeah never let me down those ones okay so you're on the manual for that reason yeah yourself. just a bit more strength well that is a very neat engine bay for a 4.2 yeah i tried to keep it pretty tidy under here just kept a single battery in the front just your starting battery gone away from your your normal second battery under the bonnet they've just gone in the rear in the drawer setup just for your heat neater under here it's a smart decision yeah otherwise you've got to run so much more cable thicker cable and you're you're away from your power source yeah that's right find most of my accessories in the rear so it made sense to chuck it all in the back so this is obviously taking up the space of where the second battery would normally go yeah that's right yep big moonlight air box obviously yeah. rear puts air to the engine starting from the snorkel like is that moonlight as well yeah that's moonlight snorkel four Come inch in. stainless yeah um which yeah runs through the air box through a duramax duramax air filter i'm gonna say like i'm not usually a fan of the of the stainless steel snorkels but they really do suit the 4.2s you gotta say or, or the patrols i gotta say yeah no they are especially unique. silver patrol yeah yeah i was gonna paint it black but went away with the stainless so cross-country cooler this helps your 4.2 to say like cooler oh massively yeah yeah i only got this about two weeks ago um and it's made a massive improvement on egt's and yeah. keeping it cool yeah how much difference going up most hills now it struggles to even get to about 350 320 nice. uh, whereas before up hills with the weight and struggling underpowered it was up around four 450 so mm. yeah massive improvement just just by that have you changed the turbo yeah so basically it went in for a bit of a birthday at United Fuel Injection. Um, got the cross country cooler, 18G um, TD05 turbo, which is also gets fuel off the 12 mil UFI pump, 230 horsepower pump. Before it went in there, it was about 85 kilowatt and 350 um, Newton meters. And it yeah. came out at 245 and <laughs> um, 680, so. Nice. Yeah, that's massive a, improvement, yeah. <laughs> that's a massive improvement. They've also put a, um, just the, U the fan and hub there, just to keep it a bit cooler as well. Do you find that high mount winch is blocking a bit of air or you haven't noticed a difference? I haven't noticed a difference, no. Mm. Um, yeah, with a good radiator and that, this thing, it's it's staying really cool. Diesel Boss breathers, front diff, rear diff, it's got transfer, transfer case, gearbox, haven't... and gearbox. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Is this vehicle locked? Yes, yeah, front and rear lockers, yeah, just ARB air lockers. Okay, you've got any air lockers. Where's the compressor for that? Uh, it's all in the rear as well, in the, uh, draw, in the draw wing. Speaking in the rear, let's go have a look. Cool. Now to the important part. Back of the wet. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice. Is that, is that to hold it? Yeah, it's to hold it, yeah. Aha. It's a hey. can crusher. <laughs> <laughs> Try to save some space in the bin bag. I just found my next mod. That's awesome. So that's to stop it from rattling, obviously. Yeah, just every time I open the back door, find that this has fallen down, so just holds it up there. Awesome. That gets used frequently or what? Um, every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> every just... now and then. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty cool setup you got here. Yeah, so just gone with the custom installations rear draw system. Uh, keeps 
keeps everything in its place mm. out on the track. So. Oh, good to see you got your first in and, sorry, first out, last in table, table set up. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh-oh. Well, let's have a look in the drawers. Yep, so... Um, Before we get too wet. Start at the bottom. Um, this pretty much just holds all the cutlery, sauces, salt and pepper, stuff that you frequently use at the campsite mm. um, just for cooking and, so yeah. So kitchen drawer and condiments. Pretty much, yep. Um, in the main bit here, so. Oh yeah, of course, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, what's in the next one? Uh, next one. It's pretty much just um, dry foods, uh, keep some filming gear in here, GoPro, drone. Yeah. Um, that's just a lighting kit that, for the awning, mm. which I've recently... It's like a strip, actually, strip lighting. Yeah, there's a six bar LED kit, um, white and orange, which I've actually got them in, mounted in there all the time now. So. Okay. And raincoat. We just might a raincoat, yeah. We could actually use that right now, can not we? <laughs> we'll go to the next one. Stuck the top. Just some fire lighters, mosquito repellents, pegs, sand pegs. Okay, so uh, like a... Utility camping, pretty much stuff that I don't use too often. Down draw. Still find that I have, you know, plenty of space everywhere else. So I'll get out of your way so you can pull the fridge out. What have we got here? It looks like a decent size. On the fridge slide here, got the angle 60 liter fridge. Uh, just yeah, comes out on the slide there. Nice. That's good size, isn't it? Yeah. That's no, good. Holds enough food and enough drinks for the trips. Yeah. And you got the t twin baskets so you can pull them out? Twin baskets, yeah. Do you normally do that when you load your fridge up? You pull the basket out to load it up? No, well in the back here, I actually found, because of the way that the sits so close to the door, uh, just keep a Oki strap in here. Oh, to hold it open and then? Yeah, just hold it open, yep. hook it on the jerry holder here mm. and load it up. So. Cool. And what's under here? Uh, so under there, it's just got, a, got the table. Oh, bit of a tri tripod's in the way here. It's all right, yeah. Well, I'll have to push the fridge in so to see how far it is. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Got your separate latch there. Table comes out just nice. for your That's good size, cooking though. or prepping. Um, so, and then, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off that, it's got the adjustable leg as well just for the extra support if you do. Ah, cool. Have a bit of and you can still get the fridge out too. You can still have both out, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right, well, let's close this up and then have a look at your switchboard. Oh, so there's your compressor. Yeah, so I've just got the outlet there. In that wing over there, it's probably going to be hard to see. Oh, that's what a compressor is? Yeah, I've got the compressor, twin ARB compressor in there, mm. um, and amp. Okay, and that twin compressor airs up and also runs the lockers, or you've got a separate compressor for your lockers? It all does one. It's got a manifold just in that wing as well with your mm. locker solenoids, um, and then also sends an outlet over to here to pump up, so which I can switch there and also have a piggyback switch in the front to for the lockers. Ah, yeah, so, of course. Yeah. What else we got here? Got lights and... Uh, interior light switch, so basically that's just, I've got your two in the back here and yep. a big strip in the front. I can switch them off at camp if I have the doors open and don't need, a, don't need to be drawing. Um, they're also triggered off the door switch as well, so if that's on and you open a door, all them come on. If it's off, just your factory ones come on. Okay. Um, and then off that, got the camp lights here. Oh, wow. The barn doors, um, just for yeah. when you're in the back cooking, whatever. Yeah, you got two different colors. Can you alternate which ones? Or? Yeah, yeah, so I've got the main switch there. And then I've just got two little switches here where oh, I can, um, you know, do your, do your white or if there's bugs around, do yeah. orange or both. That's awesome. So yeah, just trick it off there, yeah. Oh, you're an auto sparky, aren't you? Yeah, I am, <laughs> <laughs> love my lights. And these you've got custom made for this? No, they're this the um, Solar Screen Australia. They've made vehicles. Um, oh, okay, because this this is factory. That's factory, that yeah, there, yeah, that mold, yeah. Right. Cool. And you find that helps a lot? Oh, definitely with fridge temps, mm. privacy. Right so, now, I know what you mean. Yeah. So, so off camera, Scott explained <laughs> that. Um, hey, we got some stuff in the back seat first. Swag sits in the back there. When there's room, obviously. Yeah. As it goes on the roof. If it's raining, it just stays dry in here as well. Um, so yeah. In the back here, I've got the Manager 30 Red Arc. Went with that um, just to monitor what they're mm. doing. You just know. running your solar, running your batteries, charges, everything. Yeah, running solar. Um, basically, 
when I did the electrics on the car, went through, made up a complete braided harness, standalone mm. sort of harness, um, which does all the accessories completely separate to your normal car electrics. Yeah. Um, if there is a fault with any of the accessories, I can completely isolate this and still get home, you know, it's not going to affect any of the, um, any any power. The yeah, that's yeah. right. Yep. Cool. So, so yeah. two batteries? Two batteries. Um, so they're both just 105 amp AGM oh, cool. batteries. Mm. The back there, uh, I've got the fuse box here, which does all the accessories. Oh, neat. Relays for your spotlights, light bar, blah, blah, blah. Hashtag auto sparky. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite a neat way of doing it. Um, just got the fuses there and just all the, all the gear that the BMS uses, just monitor the thing. Uh, I've got the display up here, goes through and tells you your voltages, what charge is coming in, yep. your amps coming out and what I like about it too is it tells you how many days until mm. until your batteries are flat or until they're charged. So I've never had two batteries at the same time with a BMS. So when you have two batteries with a BMS, how does that function? Do you put in, so instead of, there's no entry to put two batteries, is it? You no, just so add the, you just add the two um, amp hours okay. together and then mm. yeah, it'll think it's one. And it works it out. Yeah, that's right, yeah. What's in East Nooks? Um, so yeah, in those ones, those out the way. Just got a bit of storage for recovery gear. Um, they there's some lights here. That's what. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, you can see. Stop it. I'm um, just trying to <laughs> keep some straps for you know gear on the roof. Um, my awning. They obviously come around and keep that tensioned. Mm -hmm. Recovery gear, winch block, um, and then obviously the recovery gear that's in the back bag. And that side. And here we are on the other side. But yeah, on this side here, same thing. It's got lights in here. Just carry um oh, spare parts. Yeah, a bit of spare parts in here. It's just um and your jack and... just just tooling, spare bits, cable ties, stuff to kind of you know get me out of trouble if I do get into any. Mm. Um, just the uh, the old belts. belts that came off. Don't know if they'll get me home by the looks of them. Uh, spare air filter. Just like to keep one in the car. Dust, water, whatever. And then it's just um tent pegs. I do have the uh the Darch awning walls as well that I normally keep in here. Oh, yeah, cool. um, so it's just all the gear for those, the guy ropes, jack, tools, yeah. Very nice. Anything else that fits in there. That is freaking neat. Um, did you build this or is this also a custom? It was all part of the custom installations okay. all set up. So got away from the seats, just I didn't find that I was using them and wanted that bit of extra storage. Yeah, yeah. Just for the trips. Okay. Um, oh. Dog gloves it up here. So. Fire extinguisher there and yeah, fire extinguisher. Coleman cooker. Yep. Yeah, it slides in there nicely, yeah. stays out the way, so. Yeah, good cookers though, but you can't find low. No, no. It's either burnt or not yeah. cooked. Yeah, so. so yeah. So you won't get salmonella, but you will get a lot of charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> good for your teeth. Yeah. Um, and then just in this front section here, just got two 12 inch subs, just for the music, mm. for the trips and that, so. Awesome. That's a very neat setup. You're using a cargo barrier to its maximum. You got your just a little first aid kit, a uh, bit of organizer just for your deflator and the mm. stuff that you need to reach. What's this? Um, being the STL model, oh, um, the little tray tables for when you do have the um, when you do have seats. If yeah. you want to eat off it, cup holder. Okay. Uh, obviously not being used now. Just keep the, the patrol manual in there now. Just mm. You're on the tracks and need to do some repairs. I wonder yeah. what they were thinking back in the day because if you, you hit the brakes, someone's going to lose some teeth on that yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Interior. Kept it pretty simple, really. Um, hasn't No clutter on the dash. Not really a fan of having much clutter and that throughout the car. Mm. Um, Looks very neat, very factory, but there is a lot going on. Yeah, Still. hand piece here on the magnetic mount for the two-way. Just up the front there. Yeah, I like these mounts, eh? So these are standard mounts for these radios? Standard mount, yeah. Cool. And that, that's, yep. that's wicked, just I like that. Magnetics on there. Rather than mucking around. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah, and that just runs down, down here as well, just through a light force um, pass-through. It's quite neat there. Okay. It lights up with the dash lights, etc. Oh, cool. So, so worst case, yeah. Well, if I want, if I'm not using it, I can just put it away. So oh, less clutter again. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. There's uh, your locker switches. Yeah, front and rear lockers. So um, air compressor, front, rear. Um, it's all controlled. 
So, turbo timer down here. Let's see. Good to have it on the car. How long does it run for? Generally just the 30 seconds. If I'm doing a bit of a longer drive, I'll set it to run a bit longer. Just yeah, yeah. cool down. So. How many times have you had someone at the shops telling you your car's still running? I've had it a few times, to be honest. <laughs> it's like, uh, mate, I can hear yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. get a get a few weird looks where they're, you know, yeah. you're going to leave your car running yeah. and turns off. I get to say my courtesy lights. Yeah, like, yeah. You left your lights on, mate. It's all good. It's all good. No, you left your lights on. <laughs> Your gauges up here, what are they? For? Oh, they're twin gauges in one? Yeah, so I've got three in the top gauge, um, just a twin dual, dual battery gauge there. Um, on your top one, you've got boost up one side, EGT and water temp. Now let's move up to here. Up here. Oh, in the engine bay light? Yeah, I haven't actually got an engine bay light at the moment. Just okay. run a spare feed there. I do plan to put like a strip it. in there. Mm. Um, auxiliary battery just joins the um, rears to the front. Uh -huh. um, that's just, there's an SBI 12 solenoid, just taking the brains off that. Okay, um, so do you use that when you are winching? Yeah, I do, to be honest. I like to use it. I don't know if the batteries are going to agree with it though, you know, a big current yeah. draw off, off AGM that. batteries. Yeah. Um, but I do yeah. flick it on anyway, just for that extra power. I do have an upgraded alternator coming as well, uh, 150 amp compared to your 90 oh, that's, amp that's, that's on help. it now. So it's yeah. going to, yeah, help it a lot. And there's your rock lights. Yeah. Rock lights, got eight lights underneath just for out on the tracks, mm -hmm. spotting. Reverse lights, cool. reverse camera. So that's where you can switch it to here? Uh, so the, got reverse lights there. Um, so they come on in reverse or I can just switch them on manually. Okay. Um, and the camera, that's actually my winch isolator. I've got a switch here that I need to swap it oh, over Oh, okay. Yep. Just run out of switches. So flick that on and that does my winch out and in and out. Um, spotlights and light bar, which is obviously powered up when you turn your high beams oh, on. Beams on yep. yep. And all in your outback roof console. Yeah, not much in there. That rattles, so it's just got some sheet in there at the moment. Mm. Um, yeah, just the LED lights. Nice and simple. Nice. Not too much going on. Very neat, so. mate. Q&A time. Cheers for lending me the chair, mate. No problem. Uh. Ah, a Corona rise. Cheers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, Q and A. First question: Why a patrol? I've grown up with them. Um, my dad's always had them. Have a lot of patrols at home. A lot of history in the family with them. So mm. yeah, it would have been seemed silly if I didn't have one myself. Water four point two. Just a reliable engine, easy to work on. No electronics really. Don't have to worry about sensors and all that. If, if the GQs were, you know, a bit more modern inside and a bit more comfort, it would probably be in one of them because you can't beat the square shape. Yeah. But, um, yeah, upgraded to this and it's been an awesome bus. So what is the best thing about this vehicle to you in your experience? Uh, probably the coils all around and just the, um, the ease of it to work on. Just, yeah, such simple mods with the coils and suspension, engine work. It's just... In regards to electrical work, with it not being like, the Y62, like a modern vehicle, it's a lot easier to, to work on. Oh, much easier. Like yeah. Being an auto sparky as well. Yeah, yeah, there's not much to them really. You've only got your simple simple engine components and um, yeah, no sensors for your you know your intake and okay. all of that. How long you had it for? A uh, year and a half, yep. What did you have before this? I uh, had a Series 3 GE before that, 4.2 as well. Okay. Just upgraded to the Series 4, a mm -hmm. bit more luxury inside and did like the dash on them and stuff, so. People who are looking at getting a Series 4, what's, what should I look out for? Um, maybe the high kilometres, if you can get one with low kilometres. Um, obviously that's always going to be good in any car. Mm. Um, just for rust, these cars are getting on a bit now, you know, 13 years old or so. Do you uh, find much rust on yours? No, I've actually had a good look at it. Haven't come across any yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, it came from Victoria, so. You being an auto sparky? A lot of people out there are craving the knowledge that you have um, and a lot of people are reluctant to work on their vehicle because they don't know electrics which is they probably shouldn't be working on it but for the people that uh, are willing to give it a crack and at their own risk of course what is your top three tips when it comes to auto electrics don't take shortcuts electrics are a big thing in cars they can if you take shortcuts it can end pretty badly quick mm. fires shorts um, Try to do everything properly, keep everything, um, you know, 
no exposed wiring, conduit. Just keep it tidy. Don't try and save money by doing it cheap. I would say, obviously, there is a few cheap units on the market that are good in that, but um, obviously electrics, when you're out in the bush and that, you're sort of relying on your fridge and your lights and everything. Take your time and just, yeah, try to find something that's gonna work for you, um, for what you're running off it, batteries, what you're gonna need, and mm. make sure it's gonna work for your needs. Do you find it hard not to modify your car anymore? <laughs> yeah, I find that I'm buying stuff I don't really need now. Yeah. Um, rather than, you know, doing the bigger things that have made the difference. Mm. It's just, yeah, I've tried to do everything the way I wanted it the first time. I've had previous cars where I've ch taken a shortcut, done something cheap, changed it, never liked it, or, yeah, the car was never done. Whereas yeah, yeah. this, I've done it right the first time and I've got it to a stage now where I'm really happy with it. What's your favourite mod on the vehicle? Would Off the to, top of your head. Would have to be the electrics and the draw system in the rear. It's made all the difference. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Takes pride in his work. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. All right, mate. Where can people see this vehicle? Like, see some more photos and stuff? Because I know you're on Instagram. Exploring Oz is the, um, is the page. Do, you know, quite, quite a few trips on weekends and mm. get down south. And I do have a trip coming up. Tasmania in July that I'm going to try and get over there for. Nice. So if you did want to follow that, then mm. yeah, that's where you'll find the pictures. So if people have any questions about your vehicle, can I hit you up on? Yeah, definitely. Always open for questions. Mm. Um, I try to reply to as many as I can because I do get quite a few people asking about about the mods on the car. Um, but yeah. Perfect. Uh, there you go, guys. You know where to find him. Uh, Scott, coronavirus, mate. How are we going to do this handshake thing? Can't do it. Oh. Should we do an air shake? Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> Cheers, guys. And like I said, you know where to go to get more details on this vehicle. And there is another patrol down here. Thanks for watching. See you later and stay safe.